On May 22, 2011, the deadliest tornado since 1947 hit the city of Joplin on the southern western edge of Missouri. The tornado cost $2.8 billion worth of damage, making it the costliest tornado on record. Unfortunately, with all the destruction came a high death toll of 158 ranking at the seventh most deadly tornado in U.S. history. There were also eight indirect deaths and over 1,100 injuries. This map, put together by my friend Carson, maps out the general location where these fatalities occurred. Some of these points represent multiple deaths, such as family members or people in commercial settings under one roof. Out of respect to the families, most of the specific names will not be mentioned, making exceptions only for people who are already widely known. This video will also mainly focus on fatalities that occurred in commercial settings. There will, however, be a few brief mentions of more notable residential areas. Also, note that some of these numbers are approximate. Some sources would say this number and other sources would have a slightly different number, but in general, they're pretty close. Also, obviously this video will not be monetized as that's just not cool. We begin on the western edge of Joplin close to where the tornado initially touched down. This pond represents one of the furthest west spots of any of the fatalities and it is of one of the more well-known victims. Will Norton was an 18-year-old YouTuber who had just graduated from Joplin High School. It was in this pond where his body was discovered after the tornado caused his Hummer H3 to crash. Will Norton has since been recognized by having a nearby baseball field named in his honor. A little over half a mile to the east, we come across the 501 Elks Lodge. It was at this location where four members of the club had lost their lives. While four is four too many, if the tornado had arrived only a few hours earlier during a ladies bingo game, the toll could have been much higher. Fortunately, the lodge has rebuilt and inside there is a plaque serving as a memorial to the four who lost their lives. Only a block to the east was the St. John's Medical Center, today known as Mercy Hospital. This is where five people lost their lives due to the loss of electricity. Even the backup generators failed. The structure was found to be unsafe, so the original hospital had to be demolished. Today, a small park and shelter sit in the place of the original hospital. Many of the residential parts of Joplin were completely leveled, this area being just one example of many. Some chose to rebuild while other destroyed homes simply turned into empty lots. One of the more notable destroyed residential homes was featured on an episode of Extreme Home Makeover. This was also the location of one of the youngest victims. HGTV did a good job of redesigning the house and rebuilding it after the storm. and of course they put in a storm shelter as well. Further to the south, we see the ruins of the Greenbrier Nursing Home. Here there was a total of 21 fatalities ranging between the ages of 48 and 88, including both residents and employees. These 16 fatalities marked the highest death toll in one single location during the entire event. Today all that remains in this location is an empty lot serving as a grim reminder of that horrific day in Joplin. Just north of the Greenbrier Nursing Home sits a small neighborhood, where four people were killed by the tornado. The destruction in this area was so bad that no houses were rebuilt, and instead a collection of apartment buildings stand in their place today. About a third of a mile to the east was the location of the El Vaquero Authentic Mexican Restaurant. Two victims were killed while sitting in their car in the parking lot during the event. Alva Cuero was able to rebuild after being closed for over a year and are still in operation today. Arby's across the street, however, had a different outcome as today it remains an empty lot. Further to the east shows some of the highest levels of residential destruction. The path of destruction was almost a half a mile wide at this point of the event. One particular intersection of houses was the location of seven deaths. Looking at the street view from Google, we see a nice shaded area of houses, but after the tornado, all that remains are empty lots. Even after a year, some of these empty lots seem to have a small memorial made to the victims of this intersection including a butterfly and a plaque that says hope. The butterfly is something that has become somewhat of a symbol after the event. Today the street has transformed into a small cul-de-sac that is connected to the high school.
Across the street from the high school was the Harmony Heights Baptist Church where three members had lost their lives. Minutes following the tornado, surrounding neighbors helped Pastor Charlie Burnett and 52 other members out of the rubble. They were able to rebuild and reopen a year and a half later. The fact that only three people lost their lives compared to the 56 that were there is sometimes referred to as the miracle of Joplin. Now we move into the more commercial parts of Joplin. While many businesses saw one or two deaths, Pizza Hut was a location where four people had lost their lives. The story of Pizza Hut is a tale of heroism as many of the survivors claimed they only survived due to the sacrifice of their manager, Christopher Lucas. Three employees and 14 customers claimed that Lucas had held the freezer door shut with the use of a strap when suddenly the door flew off and Christopher vanished into the storm. Rescue workers were able to recover his body several hundred yards from the freezer. Pizza Hut would rebuild and would reopen a year after the event. Down the road from Pizza Hut was Home Depot. When panels on the west side of the store fell inward, seven customers and one employee lost their lives. Two others were also killed in the parking lot during the event. Many others actually survived inside Home Depot only due to the walls collapsing outward rather than inward. I mean, you think about it, like, what do you need during a storm or at the, like, what do you need? You need a, a hardware store, a place with shovels and a place with wheelbarrows and a place with bolts so that you can rebuild. And Home Depot, unfortunately, was completely destroyed. So they came in clutch and they literally, like, within hours, people from Home Depot were there and within a month had a secondary tent built that was like a second Home Depot. That's what's over here on the left of the screen. Today at Home Depot, there's a plaque that serves as a little memorial to the victims, as well as some names on some lockers. And as you can see, they did eventually rebuild. In fact, this recent street view shows that they were advertising storm shelters right outside their windows. Finally, to the north, we have Walmart, where customers and employees slowly made their way to the back of the store. One user on Reddit described the event in detail. He said that he and his wife initially treated the approaching storm not very seriously. He said there was about a 10 minute gap between when the employees had warned the customers and when the tornado had actually hit. When the roof started shaking and started coming back, he started to worry for his life. Replying to a comment on his Reddit post, he replied, I remember looking up at the roof and it looked like the matrix or something. It was just buckling and heaving and ripping off and I was certain a beam was going to come down on top of me. My ears were popping and the sound was roaring. Women were screaming and little kids were crying mommy mommy. There was a buzzing like bees of 100 plus people chanting prayers and begging Jesus to protect them. Here's a photo he took of the DVD section after the tornado hit. After the deaths on Rangeline Road in the commercial area, there were only a few more additional residential deaths. Fortunately, at that point, the tornado lifted. So the reason why I made this video was I wanted to kind of highlight some of the heroes of that day. People like Christopher Lucas, people like Will Norton, and I'm, I mean, there's hundreds of them, literally all of them. Like anyone who survived, they had to help rebuild. Their entire town was destroyed. And I really wanted to highlight that. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, I got more videos on the way. I got some of my normal videos where I'm just kind of doing the storm damage. And then I also have another video coming up about meteorologists, so that's cool. So subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.